Our next Jaeger recipient is Kenneth Huff. Kenneth Huff is of District 4. As a middle school science teacher, Kenneth has made three-dimensional learning an integral part of his practice. His students conduct investigations that encompass science and engineering practices, cross-cutting concepts, and disciplinary core ideas as described in the Next Generation Science Standards. Kenneth? Well, welcome to Congress. Uh, we were told we have about five to seven minutes to talk, and remembering my days as a Toastmaster, I'm going to try to adhere to that as best as I can. So I have about seven to eight slides, and go through each of them in about a minute or less, and hopefully if there's time for one or two questions at the end, I can answer those. I also have uh, some raffles, uh, tickets that uh, hopefully you received, and I'll be sharing those with you because I do know that teachers like to win things. <laughs> so the one point I want to make is last fall I was reading a wonderful NRC report thinking about implementing ideas and how I could do that effectively in my classroom, and it focused on assessment. and using three-dimensional assessment in the classroom. So I live in Buffalo, and usually when I tell people that, they say, why did you do that to yourself? <laughs> well, on my way to the airport coming here, I did go by Lake Erie, and there were children splashing in the water, and there were sailboats out there. I didn't see any uh, icebergs or anything like that, so we do get to enjoy it. But perhaps some of you remember uh, shortly about a week or so before Thanksgiving last year, seeing on the news that we did get seven feet of snow in Buffalo, and I was one of those people shoveling that. So we can take, uh, take care of that. Um, but you've all heard the expression before, if you can't beat them, join them. So I had five days off of school that week, so I spent some time uh, at home working on a particular lab. Uh, several years ago, I had the good fortune of going to my NASA data uh, workshop at, at Langley Research Center and uh, wanted to revise this lesson centered on the scientific question to some areas of the Great Lakes have more snow than others. So in thinking about this, I wanted to use a performance expectation uh, from the NGSS and use this to begin a storyline with the work for my students in the class. So I took a DCI and a science and engineering practice and a cross-cutting concepts. And as we know, one of the key shifts or the big uh, shifts in science instruction related to the NGSS and the framework is that of three-dimensional learning. So I wanted to think about how could I integrate this excellent NRC report with examples from chapter four of this report in my classroom with my students. So. numbers for copy of this report. The last three numbers are 280. 280. So continuing on, I'd like you to notice, I still have one more report. Um, so I'd like you to notice this image, which I shared with my students. It's from a cool NASA website, again, my NASA data. And I'd like you to notice the date at the top, the 16th of January, 1994. And I'd specifically like you to look at the blue shaded area in the center where the uh, Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, and Lake Huron come together. Uh, you'll notice on the y-axis, there's a latitude. At the upper x-axis is the percent of snowfall by delineated by a different shade of blue, and at the bottom axis is the longitude. So I shared this in an image with my students and asked them to look for patterns, as you know, one of the cross-cutting concepts. Now I'd like you to look at this image right here, same date, 16th of January 2004, 10 years later. So I asked my students to analyze these two images and again, see if you could notice patterns. And I asked the students in their cooperative groups to start talking about them. What do you notice, students? And looking at the next slide, so again, we talk about patterns. Uh, so specifically, the students may say, well, Mr. Huff, I noticed that uh, in both images, Lake Ontario, for example, had 100% of snowfall on both of these different dates. Uh, I also noticed that you, as I asked you to look at, that the blue area has shifted somewhat. Why is that? As scientists, we start to ask questions, tying that into another practice. 
Looking at number two, what, what's the claim here? Do some areas of the Great Lakes have more snow than others? Number three, the evidence. So I would begin by scaffolding this and giving my students a hint in the beginning and then looking at Buffalo, for example, 79 degrees west longitude, 43 degrees north latitude. And we can see at 1994, 100% of snowfall, but in 2004, only 80% of snowfall. Well, why is that? Again, thinking to questions. What am I doing this whole time? I'm asking my students to make their thinking visible. What are they, what are they thinking? And then at the end, what's their reasoning? So as part of this unit, I ask a meteorologist from NOAA, from our Buffalo office, to come in and speak to my students. And he starts to describe to students, well, what's this idea about lake effect snow? And what's this idea of fetch, which is the, the cold Arctic air coming over the warm lake water and how that creates lake effect snow? And how this also ties into the cross-cutting concept of energy as well. So using that to continue the storyline. Questions? So I just want to thank you for listening. Uh, my name again is Kenneth Huff, and I hope you have a great Congress. If you would like this lesson, I'd be happy to send it to you via email. If um, you did not get a copy of the report, uh, I have one more raffle. And if you did not win this next raffle, you can go to nap.edu where all the uh, email or all the uh, uh, URLs there are available for you to download any of the reports from the NRC. So let's do one quick raffle. Last three numbers, 337. 337. 337. Thank you.